Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of the best spellcrafts you can buy early in Hogwarts Legacy and getting these spellcrafts early will help you to succeed in the long run with your room of requirements. I have had several comments kind of asking which ones I got first or which ones I would get first in hindsight so I'm going to go over the ones that I find to be the most crucial. Now it is worth noting that some of these are not available right at the start of the game. Some of them will require some side story mission progression or some main story progression in order to unlock. But once you do have them unlocked, you will be able to gain access to them. And I believe once you get to a certain point in the main story, you do get kind of a bulk unlock of most of the spellcrafts in the game just shortly after you unlock the room of requirements. So once you can get some of the stuff, you'll probably be able to get most of it, if not all of it, at that point. Now, before we go any further into the video, the way that you will actually get these spellcrafts is by making your way over to Hogsmeade and specifically to the Terms and Scroll shop in the bottom south area of Hogsmeade here. The fastest way to get there is by going to the South Hogsmeade Flu Fire and then travelling down to the shop where you'll be able to purchase all of these. So first things first is going to be the Material Converters. You can see here on my Conjuration menu that the Material Converters can be done in each of the four styles that you see running throughout the theme of the whole Room of Requirements which are of course scientific, botanical, eclectic and gothic so they can fit nicely in with the rest of your decoration. Now this is probably one of the first things I would get in hindsight because as you guys can see from the gameplay here if I head over to one of these I can pick up the moonstone and they actually give you 10 moonstone every 10 minutes. Now some players have argued that this isn't as worth it because if you just head over to the map and basically make your way around the world map particularly in areas around the edges of cliffs and things like that you are going to find quite a lot of moonstone on your own and often Often, you can get much more in 10 minutes than what you would get off of those. However, if you are just going to be going around doing the main story quest or doing some other questing, these are actually quite a good investment because it means you don't need to go out of your way and every time you come back to the room of requirements, you will have some moonstone waiting for you, which I have found to be quite nice. And unfortunately, I didn't get this as early on in the game as I would have liked. So that should be one of your main priorities. Now these, you are able to place up to three of down at one time and they do cost 15 moonstone each, which means you will need to collect twice from each station in order to get your moonstone back and then start making a profit so essentially 20 minutes after they've been placed down you will start to make a profit in moonstone from placing these so as long as you've got 45 moonstone to get you started and of course the goal to do so as well to buy the conjuration then you should be pretty set to go now the next thing here is these hopping pots as well as looking super cool and just jumping around in the room of requirements these are really really helpful especially early on because they will give you a whole host of different potions now you can't actually choose the potions that you get that is kind of the caveat to how good these are but if we go over and claim them you can see that every 12 minutes a random potion will be brewed and you can see there I've got two Wigan Weld ones and a Maxima potion and that's really nice especially early on in the game you're going to get a few assignments that are going to ask you about things like invisibility and thunder brew potions you might not necessarily have the materials up for grabs but you may be able to get some of those potions early doors from the hopping pots so again, even if that isn't the case and you've already done your assignments, they're still going to be super useful for combat and I do use potions fairly regularly and as you can see I still have a decent significant amount of each of these from the hopping pot. So these do keep me nicely stocked up, certainly recommend getting those. Again, this is another one that you can place three of at a time. They are found under the potions menu and then you can scroll down to the hopping pot section and they cost 30 moonstone each so they are going to be a little bit more expensive than the material refiners but again these are super worthwhile putting down once you do have the availability of gold to buy the conjuration and then the moonstone to place them. Another little tip which I learned from the comments on some previous videos that if you do not want the potion that it gives you for example like me at endgame here if I haven't done a few battle arenas or I haven't been going around taking out foes as you can see I'm at 18 Wigan Well potions right now but often I have been at 25. One thing you can do is actually use Evanesco which will get rid of the pot, refund you the moonstone and then you can replace it down to get a different potion if it isn't something you want. However you are still going to then have to wait the same amount of time and it could end up being the same pot 
again. So it's up to you if you want to do that one, but it's an option if you have maximum health pots towards the end of the game. Now, of course, these tips would be incomplete without mentioning the chopping stations here. These are fantastic. They can give you random botanical ingredients for your potion crafting, and they take nine minutes per time. And again, similarly to the hopping pots, you cannot pick what you get. So you do just get one random thing. Sometimes it can be quicker than what you would get. As you can see here, if I go into my large potting station, Fluxweed would take usually 15 minutes for a yield of five whereas the chopping stations only take nine minutes however they do only give you a yield of one and you cannot choose which ones you get so sometimes it may be quicker sometimes it may be longer and it is a random chance similarly to the hopping pots With these ones i would always recommend picking it up the ingredients though as the total limit for botanical ingredients does seem to be pretty high i haven't managed to reach it yet and i have got a couple of hundred of each of these and then of course what you can do with them is use them to make any of the potions in the game that you would like to make and that can be really good particularly early on if you don't have access to all of the plants or all of the different planters you can get some of the ingredients you need for potions that you might not otherwise have got through these chopping tables. Chopping tables are of course through the herbology section and then again you go down here to the chopping stations you can pick which style type you would like these again have a maximum of three to be able to be placed down and they do cost 20 moonstone each after the material refiner i would recommend these or the hopping pots and whichever one you don't do say you do the hopping pots first definitely do these third or vice versa do these second and the hopping pots third as these are going to give you a lot of natural production outcome and it's going to be really good for helping you succeed in the game the next one we're going to look at here then is the composters these every four minutes will produce you with a bag of fertilizer as you can see if we pick up from this one here and what fertilizer does is allow you to increase the yield of a planter by one now sometimes if you just need some extra let's say mallow sweet you've done a particular amount of merlin trails and you're running low so you want to increase the outcome you will get an additional mallow sweet but this is also really good for some of those larger plants like the venomous tentacular that you can see here as these output one every time so adding an additional one will actually double this these can be found in your conjuration menu under the herbology tab and again just above where the chopping up stations are you can find the composters again you can choose any of the styles that you like to fit your room and place them wherever you want and again a maximum of three this time these only cost 10 moonstone each and in the grand scheme of things i would say they are significantly less useful than both the chopping station and the hopping pots but after you've got those placed down and maybe a couple of planters and brewing stations etc that is something i would certainly recommend doing particularly when you start to work on your large plants like i mentioned because they can indeed double the outcome of those again something like the chinese chomping cabbage these only have one yield as well but putting a fertilizer on gives it a double yield so i would definitely recommend using this on your combat plants over the regular plants unless you particularly need some plants for your potion brewing then after you've got those automatic production stations down and ready i would of course recommend buying out the potting tables that you want to have in your room the particular ones i like to use are the five small pots here and i've got three of these placed down then over here i've got two of the large ones and i have some medium ones back up in the other room as well so that's kind of a mix and match it depends what you want to grow more of or what you need more of currently but i would recommend certainly spending your money on those afterwards as again once you harvest these plants they do automatically give you another yield every 10 minutes so you don't need to replant them after that and that can be a really nice feature again to come back to the room every time you come back you're getting a lot of automatic production so you definitely want to get those down after that point hopefully you're going to be getting enough moonstone from your material refiners up here so that you can decorate the rooms however you would like to do so and you can go and have fun with the rest of your room of requirements so that is kind of my top tips on which conjurations you should buy which spellcrafts you should buy and which order to kind of get them in or the order i wish i'd done it in if i was starting up a new character or if i'd known this information earlier hopefully it does help you out to get some of the spellcrafts early on that will really help you to snowball your progression in the room of requirements and get progressed just that little bit quicker with all of your decorations and your production stations in your room of requirements if you have enjoyed the video please do drop me a like down below as it massively helps to support me and my content here on the channel and if you are new to the channel and you want to see more hogwarts legacy tips guides and videos then do make sure to drop a subscribe down below to stay up to date with all of the latest and greatest as there is many more videos on the way to you and other than that i would like to thank you for watching and i will catch you again very very shortly on a brand new upload so take care and peace